When I was young, I used to debate a lot with my parents. So they always told me you should be a lawyer. I used to play around and watch a lot of stuff like Law and Order. I used to, I loved that show. That's why I was so confused in the first time it happened. I thought you had to do something for them to really stop you. But after that, I seen that you didn't have to do nothing to get stopped. Most of the times when I get stopped, I'm walking down the block. They never say, this is why I'm stopping you. When you're young and you're black, no matter how you look, you fit the description. The cop car pulled up right here. It was a patrol car, and then two cops came out. They lined us up against the wall, and he started patting me down. So I said, why are you stopping us? And then the cop looked at me. He's like, are you trying to be a smart ass? He grabbed me off the wall, and he was like, oh, you're doing graffiti. And then that's when he put the cuffs on me. So when he turned me around and I seen a wall, I was like, how am I doing graffiti if it's black? And I have a pink highlighter in my pocket. I've been taken in a lot of times because if you're stopping me, I'm gonna wanna know why. And that's when you could hit a change in their tone. They start to get a little more aggressive and you feel threatened. They were like, if you're gonna talk back, we're gonna take you in. If you're gonna ask questions, we're gonna take you in. You sit in a precinct for like, I would say like eight, nine hours with a bunch of people you don't know. They put the cuffs on really tight and it stinks and you don't get fed. All this time, y'all know I'm innocent. They just kept me there till like four in the morning and then let me out the back door. I would say it was happening at least like four or five times in a month. Cause I was always outside and I was always outside late. So if you're with a lot of people, you're a suspect automatically. From the time I was 15 to 18, I would say I was stopped, questioned, and frisked for at least 60 to 70 times. I needed a break from cops, and the only way I could get that was to stay home. I felt like it was nothing nobody could do. It's painful to think about him being harassed and arrested and, and just being let out, because there's nothing on the kid. I've experienced it as well. I'm an educator, I'm in my 30s, uh, I'm a family man, and there's a police car behind me. The reaction turns into fear. And I have to run through my head. Okay, what am I doing? Where am I keeping my hands? What am I saying to this officer? Do I got their name? Do I have the badge number? You know, like, I'm going through the checklist. And that's only because I've, I've equipped myself over the years to go through the checklist. Every 13-year-old kid, 14-year-old kid, adolescent, doesn't have a checklist. I would say things started changing after I told one of my teachers, Drew, everything that happened to me. How you doing, man? Actually talking to him about my life and him listening and like him sharing the same emotion that I had. He just cried and he helped me. And I think that's where the pain came from. Um, the, the, the pain came from, because I like to look at my students as if they're my children. And if this was my son and this was my daughter, you know, is this what I want for them? It helped me a lot to have people that you could actually sit down and talk to. I learned a lot of stuff about policing. I learned my rights. I learned the system behind policing, like the broken windows theory. If you fix small problems, the larger ones will stop. That's what they believe will happen. But now you're stopping innocent people walking down a block or just walking with a group. That don't mean they're necessarily doing something wrong. I felt like the only reason I got stopped in Frisk is because I was black. Young men of color are targeted, period. End of story. They are targeted, we're racially profiled, and the expectation is if I stop and frisk this guy, he's gonna have something on him.
it's something that happens so many times and like you start to see it happen not only to you but to other people throw a paper in the middle if you have ever been targeted by the police because they assumed you were doing something wrong if more people came together to improve stop and frisk i think the whole system would change it motivates me more to want to be a lawyer so i can help young people my age and help people younger so that they can learn more before they get to that age where they start getting stopped